Hello, my name is Joanna Anuran Torres. I'm a UCLA Interventional Radiology Nurse Practitioner. I'm here today along with Dr. Stephen Raymond to discuss with you the state-of-the-art diagnosis and non-invasive treatment of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. It's the most common cancer and the third leading cause of cancer-related mortality in American men. According to Cancer Society in 2022, there's approximately 268,490 new cases and about 34,500 deaths in American men. To further discuss this, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Stephen Raymond. He's the Director of Prostate MR Imaging here at the Department of Radiology, UCLA Health. Thank you, Joanna. I'm uh, Dr. Stephen Raymond from the Department of Radiology at UCLA. And on behalf of my colleagues in urology, radiation oncology, and medical oncology, I'd like to discuss our state-of-the-art diagnosis for early prostate cancer using MRI, MRI PET, and also now offering an array of new MRI-based technologies for treating prostate cancer uh, that are very exciting. So the diagnosis of prostate cancer is complicated. Most men uh, arrive at a diagnosis of prostate cancer based on a screening test, typically a PSA, sometimes a digital rectal exam, sometimes because of risk factors, including family history or genomic history, or sometimes because of urinary or sexual dysfunction or other problems. Typically, men arrive at a prostate cancer diagnosis because they undergo a PSA test. The PSA test is a good test, and it's been there since the early 90s, but it has a lot of problems. It only detects about 80% of all prostate cancer, that's a sensitivity. In an elevated PSA above four, the specificity is only about 35, 36%, and that means that two thirds of men with an elevated PSA never have prostate cancer. And if a man has an elevated PSA, only 30% of them will have any prostate cancer. So the, really the idea in prostate cancer is who has prostate cancer and more importantly, who has high grade prostate cancer? Because those are the ones we really want to act on. And our job really is to see who needs potential treatment or who can be watched on active surveillance. Because most men at a certain age will have prostate cancer. 15% of men with a PSA less than four have prostate cancer and 70% of men with a PSA greater than four have no prostate cancer. Because of the inadequacies of the PSA, a variety of things like PSA density, PSA velocity, and free PSA have been utilized to help us better understand PSA. Once a PSA typically is elevated, men go on to a traditional six to 12 core truss biopsy. Now this is a good test, but not a great test because it relies on what's known as a template biopsy. You don't actually biopsy a target, you biopsy specific areas in the prostate gland hoping to find cancer. And although this is good, it's not that good. And there are better ways to do this. In the traditional truss biopsy scheme, the detection rate for prostate cancer is only 40 to 70% depending on who does it. And if that's negative, the second time they do a truss biopsy, it's about 20%. And the third time they do a truss biopsy, if it's negative, is only about 8%. At the end of it, only about half of men using the elevated PSA and the traditional truss biopsy, only half of men have a true risk stratification, meaning there's some error in what's actually been diagnosed. And also, depending on where you are in the prostate, the biopsy suffers from different performance issues. So if you're in the base, it does relatively well, but if you're in the apex, it does relatively poorly. So we think a better way to do this would be to have an MRI before the biopsy. An elevated PSA followed by an MRI, followed by bone scans or PSMA scans, and then a targeted prostate biopsy. So these are ways now which have changed the traditional way that we diagnose prostate cancer. So with the MRI, we have T2-weighted images that shows, show us the gland and show us where the cancers are possibly in the gland. Then we can use diffusion-weighted images that show us more carefully and more succinctly where the cancers are in this case. 
this dark area here. We can use perfusion weighted images where we inject dye and show that the, the cancers take up the dye and uh, are vascular. We can use spectroscopy, which we don't do that much anymore. We can see the chemical signatures of cancer in the gland. We can use PSMA PET scan with MRI now incorporated into MRI to help us get the best idea of where the prostate cancer is. If it's in the prostate, outside the prostate, and so on, we can initiate a very careful targeted biopsy of the areas that are abnormal in the prostate. We can then now treat either part of the gland with ultrasound or the entire gland with ultrasound uh, under MRI guidance. And so these are all the exciting things we can do now that we weren't able to do just a few years ago. And so here's a 65 year old man with an elevated PSA and a prior negative biopsy. So he underwent an MRI instead of a repeat biopsy. So here you can see that on the T2 weighted images, there's a dark spot here, which is bright on the diffusion weighted images, dark on the ADC images, and has a very vascular curve on MRI. And this tells us this is most likely a cancer and probably a higher grade cancer. So we give it a PIRAD score of five. And PIRAD scores of five mean that it's high likelihood of a cancer and high, higher likelihood of a higher grade cancer. So we can also use MRI with PET scans and the PSMA PET scan is a real advance in those situations where MRI may be negative. The MRI is also not perfect. It picks up about 80% of all the high value targets in the prostate and the combination of MRI and PSMA PET really pick up close to 90% of all significant prostate cancers. So once we pick it up, we have a variety of ways we can use to target it in a very smart fashion. And this is one of them. This is a MR guided system, which allows you to line the MRI this way with a transrectal or transgluteal or transperineal way to biopsy the prostate. We can also do ultrasound fusion with a variety of different systems to also get this target. But in my world, I prefer the MRI system because I know every time that I can see the target under MRI, I can biopsy that target under MRI. And, you know, we, we do this um, uh, biopsy in a variety of different ways. And this is one schematic that looks where we put this, this biopsy guide into the rectum. We hook up the machine. And then after taking some MRIs, we then take the biopsy here uh, of the high value target. And here's what we do. So under MRI guidance, we see the target here. We aim our device to the target. We can do this through the rectum. We can do this through the perineum or the buttock muscles. Then we align it in two different planes. And here it is right there. And then fire the needle and take only precisely that target. And this was a pathology Gleason 3 plus 4. And that's the high value target. The first biopsy was negative. Remember that if they did another biopsy the same way, they'd be probably negative, And the third biopsy would probably be negative. But this way, we know exactly where to go and get the most high value target. And that's the other way to look at it. That brings us to treatment. And treatment now has been revolutionized by two new FDA approved devices in 2021. The first we'll discuss is the Profound Tulsa system. And this little video will show you how we use MRI, diagnose the cancer. And now in the MRI scanner, we can treat the cancer very precisely with ultrasound waves, sound waves at a specific frequency. We put a little catheter into the prostate after the patient is anesthetized. We take MRI scans and then use the device centrally to heat the prostate very precisely inside where the cancer is and leave the outside spared where the nerves are. And that's what causes the problems with impotence and incontinence. And we avoid those areas very precisely. 
The other thing I like about the system is that we can measure how hot it gets in the very center or at our target and also at the periphery where the nerves are. So we know not to heat the nerves. We know not to heat the urethra, the bladder, neck, or the sphincter. Those are very critical structures. And this is for the first time a way to do that. Um, and this is, this is um, how one of our first cases was done a few years ago with Dr. Pantuck here. Um, here's the actual device going into a patient uh, over a wire. The patient's in the MRI scanner and then here's the actual treatment where we run the device after adjusting everything and basically start treating in this manner the entire prostate gland or part of the prostate gland depending on how much cancer and where the cancer is uh, at the, uh, within the prostate. And this is what it looks like after we're done. So we're not stop, we don't stop at the treatment. We follow our patients throughout their lives. And here is the initials gland on the T2-weighted MRI uh, with the cancer back here, 58cc gland with a PSA of 5.5. The PSA was elevated. We did a targeted biopsy, found Gleason 3 plus 4 cancer. Then we did, this, did the, the treatment. And right immediately, you can see after the after the uh, treatment, the whole gland goes dark and then keeps, keeps being dark one month later, three months later, and 12 months later. And most importantly, the whole gland kind of shrivels up, as you see nicely. The center of the gland where the urethra is is spared. It's spared here and it's spared there. And this man had no urinary problems and almost no erectile dysfunction. So this was a very nice treatment of the entire gland and he's still cancer free now three years after his treatment. So this device was on the cover of the Journal of Urology in 2021 in this seminal article which we published. And that's what I want to do is make sure that everything we do is carefully researched and because I don't want to do anything that isn't in the patient's best interest. And this showed some of the best results for this device that has ever been shown for any prostate treatment. So here, the PSA went down to 0.34 on average and stayed down to 0.63 at two years. And 80% of men had no cancer at one year after their treatment. And at, by two years, only 7% of men underwent a second treatment for any sort of residual cancer or new cancer that appeared in the prostate. And we have learned from the study that we need to be careful about not uh, screening without the CT scan and other things. So now we use CT scans to make sure there are no calcifications and other things so that we can even achieve higher results and better results for men, uh, better than 80%. And that's hopefully what the new studies will show. Also, when we looked at safety, the procedure was very well tolerated. There are no intraoperative complications. Some adverse events, including some infections, a little bit of urinary retention, some stenoses, and other things that resolved with over time. There were no severe urinary incontinence symptoms. Only 2% had some moderate urinary incontinence. And 20% of men had some moderate erectile dysfunction, but most of them, 83% of them, went back to their baseline by six months. So here's another device that was FDA approved and that we offer at UCLA. This is the Insitec transrectal device, which also uses MRI and ultrasound to precisely treat the prostate. Um, man lies in the scanner under anesthesia. We put the probe in. We then uh, put the patient into the MRI scanner and the device is in the rectum. We, in, we inflate a balloon. We scan the patient and scan the prostate and then start treating the focal area in the prostate with these ultrasound uh, energy devices. And this is another outpatient procedure uh, which will help treat some forms of prostate cancer. 
And so here's, a, here's another T2 weighted scan I'm gonna show you with a cancer down here. We then plan the procedure with the device down here in the rectum. We plan the procedure with a large margin. We careful to avoid the urethra, the bladder neck, careful to avoid the sphincter and other things. And then we treat the patient. And this is what it looks like after treatment where you have the, a focal area that doesn't enhance. It's, uh, it leaves a, leaves a nice margin around the cancer. Then we follow the patient over time. So this is what we offer, comprehensive diagnosis and treatment with MRI and MRI PET uh, for early prostate cancer. And we always do this in conjunction with our urology, radiation oncology colleagues, because we want to make sure the treatment is right for you and you're getting what you need from the diagnosis and the potential options available and give you the best choice of options available anywhere in the United States. What we'll need is your PSA level and, and prostate biopsy results, MRI and CT images, if you have it, the bone scan and the results of the testing. And this will be sent to our interventional radiology center. And as Joanna will explain to you, this is the way that we will initiate a consultation for you. Thank you, Dr. Raymond. I hope you all enjoyed listening to our presentation. If you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer and you're ready to come see us to see if you're a candidate for any of our treatment options, we're gonna need a few items from you so we can evaluate. We're gonna need some PSA levels, your MRI prostate pelvis report and images, your CT pelvis images, and your prostate biopsy results. In addition, if you had a bone scan or a PSMA PET scan or genomic testing done, we'd like to see those results as well. If you'd like to see us for consultation, please contact UCLA Interventional Radiology. We'd love to see you. Thank you.